Good morning fellow option traders. This is Jeff and welcome to the Daily Scan for Wednesday, August 7th, 2013. Here's what's on tap for announcements today. The biggest impact could be this petroleum status report. Other than that, uh, just a lot of Fed speak. I guess you could say you had Charles Evans yesterday. Monday was Richard Fisher. Today is Sandra uh, Pianalto, I believe. That might be how you pronounce that. And of course, whenever anybody, any of the uh, regional chairmen talk, there's always a little bit of shakiness or confidence injected into the market. So it looks like uh, Charles shook things up a little bit yesterday and maybe Sandra will shake things up some more today. What do we have going on in the world? We have Asia which closed down pretty much a decent percent. Remember anything over a half except for the Nikkei is uh, pretty strong. So um, the Nikkei I would say anything over three is pretty strong. So we had a strong bearish move in Asia and in Europe. Right now it's sort of mixed and kind of directionless except for maybe the FTSE MIB here. Okay, um, and let's jump over and take a look at what's happening right here. Okay, so we're looking at, and close this down, um, we're looking pretty negative this morning, the half a percent already before we even open, so there may be a big bearish move today in our markets. Gold uh, continues its decline. It's below, well below 1300 and oil is still above 105 um, and looking pretty flat today. And I bought gas yesterday and prices weren't too bad. Um, I just wish I didn't have to buy gas. <laughs> I just, it's really expensive. But anyway, um, that's where we are with these markets here in the pre-market in the States. Okay, uh, looking at our account here, um, LinkedIn is still a bit of a headache. I don't think it's going to be able to move even with a big bearish move in the market. I'm not sure that it's going to be able to move. And uh, whether or not um, it would be worth it to get out now or not, I'm not sure either. Hopefully I'll have some time today to quietly take a look at this and think about it. Goldman's not moving very well either in the desired direction. And I did yesterday uh, jump in on a IWM. Um, bear call based on the indicators. And let's take a look at the chart there. All right, um, we have, we're still white here, but we're magenta down here. So there was a move down there, and I jumped the gun a little bit. My matrix says not to hold off trading on this day when these colors change. So I'm still... Um, testing this matrix out, but I did go in with a bear call yesterday afternoon. And um, let's take a look at Visa and see how that's behaving. Okay, we were threatened on this yesterday a little bit. Uh, we'll see how it works out today. We're not sure here if uh, what kind of what are we looking at we're actually looking at the possible gap up here at the open so let's keep an eye on that 
All right. Um, I would like to jump to the A plus list, but before I do that, let me just bring it up here anyway. I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, Priceline and their earnings and doing a calendar at earnings. Uh, I was messing around with this earlier this morning. And let me just uh, fix this here. Go back to where I was. Unlock those and get us back here. Okay. Um, let's go back to here. Okay. So I took a look at the market maker move and I um, took 47.50, rounded off, $47.50. And I subtracted on this end, and I added on this end. And these are the prices that I came up with, 982 on the high end and 887 on the low end, uh, using just the market maker move as to where price will be on Friday when the shorts would expire on this particular um, trade, on this uh, double spread or double calendar Okay, so um, calendars are highly dependent on volatility. So I thought, and I might be wrong here, but I thought that my long, if I made it in October, that IV would not move very much after earnings because, you know, it's saying that we're looking at a $95 move between now and October. But the problem is is that some of that $95 move is going to be absorbed by this particular move here at earnings. So I'm not sure that there's any way that you can really win with a volatility crush on a calendar. And here's why. Um, if I change the IV the impl or, yeah, the implied volatility on this October by just a little bit, the trade ends up being a loser. So let's take a look at this from a visual perspective. Okay, so we're sitting here with this double calendar, and we're saying that if nothing happens, nothing happens at all on Friday, we'd all be very rich if price does not move at all we'd be up $1,200. Um, that looks really nice and very, very attractive, but probably not going to happen that way. Okay, so what's going to happen is we're looking at an IV of, on the front month here with the expiration of this Friday, of 72 and 78 respectively for the call and the put calendar. Um, let's say that that gets down closer to where we are. Let's look at next week's expiration, the average. The average here is 46. So we're saying that we're looking at maybe like a 30, 28, a loss of 28 points in implied volatility. So let's subtract 28 from the August. Up at minus 28. Okay, now let's take a look at our risk profile. Even today, we would end up making a boatload of money because those shorts would be worth practically nothing. And if we pushed us up to Friday again, we'd be right here at maximum profit at today's current price and very close to max. Uh, profit at both of these anticipated moves here. So that looks really nice. But what if we lost just a little bit on this October? Let's say we lost two. Uh, this is not what happened the last time I did this. Hmm. Let's unlock this. 
All right, so now we're at 1623 minus 5. Okay, that's what I did before. If I just take five points out of the IV for the back month, we're down to practically nothing. Um, but over here, and we go to expiration, we'd still make 970 on this end and 529 on this end. But again, the danger here is with this back month. How much is that going to move? So what I am going to do is I am going to execute this particular trade in my paper money account and I'm going to see exactly how it ends up. I'm going to keep track. I only have two days actually to keep track <clears throat> Excuse me, of uh, IV as it moves through its life cycle and I'm really only interested in maybe um, Friday probably not Friday getting out of it. I'll probably just let the whole thing uh, or let the shorts expire and we'll see how it comes out and then we'll take a look at it Monday morning. I'm going to be back on the road again Friday so um, not sure if I'll have time to do a recording. I might. We'll just see how that plays out. So if you don't see one on Friday then you know why. So that's where we are here and I don't want to, I can reset these parameters. There we go. Okay. I'm going to keep these prices locked in here. And let's watch and see how this plays out. Okay, let's start our scan. Should be interesting after the big uh, bearish move yesterday. Okay. Uh, Apple, we're looking for our target down here. We may be coming down to uh, touch that. I would be interested in a 45 on this as well. So we're looking for uh, stochastic to hit that target down there. Amazon. All right. We're having a little bit of a adjustment period here, you might say. We um, will move this over to here and see if we can come down and give us an, another hook. If I do, uh, right, we may be getting our hook coming up on that. Let me just move that over a tad. And see how that one plays out. Cell gene. Whoa, yeah, it uh, cell gene reacts pretty violently. What are we looking at here? Um, our August, we're looking. Well, then volatility is not all that bad on it. Sure does make some big moves though. It's kind of fun to watch this one. Uh, CF also makes some big moves and uh, reality is setting in on CF um, they had really good earnings huh I'll have to see what their what's their open look like today I uh, can't really determine what their opens what they may be opening at Chipotle All right, moving very nicely down here. Uh, we're just going to keep an eye on it, see if we get our hook. Gold, a little worried about my iron condor on gold here. This is disturbing. But we're in a downtrend and nothing going on there for an entry for a directional trade. Google. Alright, um, 
Google's heading towards our target. I'm just looking at everything else here and I'm seeing not a lot of confirmation for a bullish trade on this. Not a lot at all. As a matter of fact, it's a little bit disturbing. And we're seeing, we saw a little bit of uh, resistance here. And that's the high. Yeah, uh, not looking real good for a bullish trade on Google. We're going to keep an eye on it though. Goldman Sachs. All right, <laughs> we should have stayed in this thing. We would be just fine. Yeah, took a big lump on that one. Taking a big lump on LinkedIn too. I'm not seeing the kind of price action that looks like it's going to bring it down here. But I'm not going to exactly panic at this point. So let's just hang in there. MasterCard. Uh, MasterCard is doing stunningly. It's not going to cooperate anytime soon and give us an entry. Netflix. Oh, Netflix had a very nice day yesterday, all things considered. Hmm. That's uh, pretty impressive. Netflix buy, sell, or hold. Secrets to making money in Qualcomm, Netflix, and AIG. Well, that's a eclectic mix of underlines. Hmm. Qualcomm. I used to trade that a lot, especially covered calls. Hmm. Interesting. May have to read that if I get some time. Priceline. Oh, we already beat that one to death. Yeah, even on a negative day on the market, price line still gapped up. It just didn't go anywhere. Typical thing to happen during earnings, or in, right before earnings, is that you get these days with wide ranges, and then your open and your close are almost exactly the same. Panera. All right. Uh, this is no longer a valid, well, it is a valid entry for a, I'm sorry, <laughs> a little confused there, for a uh, bear trade, bear call. So are we going to get our hook here? Let's wait and see. I don't see any strength in being able to move down in price. Because if price just stays the same, we'll get our hook and stochastic will start to come down. Uh, so... It's not always a hundred percent. We're seeing uh, some strength on the longer term, and uh, it's really kind of a mixture of. Uh, we're not getting good confirmation on Panera. We'll just keep an eye on it, though. We're not going to panic on that. And did Tesla have their earnings last night? No, that's tonight. So this should be interesting to see what happens with that one. <clears throat> Not going to touch it. And of course we are in Visa right now. Um, it's kind of a risky trade, but we'll see how this works out. See if it uh, follows MasterCard in the strength arena. Okay. I think volume is better today than it was yesterday. I don't know why the volume was so low. Uh, it didn't change anything. I checked everything out today and everything looked just fine. So, I mean, it's just one of those uh, flukes, I guess you might say. So anyway, uh, thank you very much for watching. Have a great day and happy trading.